that's that's an interesting word sit Welcome to Barnyard Language. We are Katie and Arlene, an Iowa sheep farmer and an Ontario dairy farmer with six kids, two husbands, and a whole lot of chaos between us. So kick off your boots, reheat your coffee, and join us for some Barnyard Language. Honest talk about running farms and raising families. In case your kids haven't already learned all the swears from being in the barn, it might be a good idea to put on some headphones or turn down the volume. Welcome back, everybody. This is Arlene again. Welcome to episode two here at Barnyard Language. We are interviewing Carrie Mess, who's better known as Dairy Carrie. And I see she's got herself silenced, so I hope she's going to stop that before we need her to record. Um, well, yeah, I just, you know, sit quietly until I'm spoken to. That's how I roll in life. Oh, I never do. So that's probably part of the problem. No, that was um, absolutely sarcasm. You know. <laughs> Carrie is a Wisconsin dairy farmer with her husband and her in-laws. She is also the mother of two small children and is a very well-known advocate. Um, last I checked, she had about 62,000 Facebook followers. I guess I haven't checked in a couple of days, so she might be up from there even. Um, might be down from there. <laughs> you might be down I, from there. I'm pretty good at pissing people off. Yeah, that's actually a large part of why I uh, asked to work with you, though. So, Arlene, what has been happening on your farm? Well, at the time that we're recording, we're in the week leading up to our Holstein show, which tends to end up being one of the stre most stressful weeks on the farm because, I mean, like anything else, you, you think months ahead, oh, we'll, we'll start to get ready. But, um, you know, cows and heifers need to be trained right now. So there's a lot of that going on, a lot of washing and uh, reassessing whether the one that you... Uh, signed up to be part of the Holstein show a few weeks or months ago is really looking good enough or not and uh, lining up workforce. So uh, that's a lot of what's going on at our place these days. Plus, you know, the usual chores and all the other things that, that go on in, in the farm, on the farm in the summertime. Katie, what's happening on the farm with you these days? Around our place, we're at that time of year where, you know, in, in early spring, we start off pretty well, you know, with our plan and on schedule and things. And then by mid-August things have definitely started to devolve into chaos a bit. So our county is under enough drought right now that we're allowed to graze our conservation reserve prairie, which is great, but it's not fenced and it's certainly not fenced for cattle and it's really, really not fenced for keeping the bull on the opposite side of the fence from the cows who are now coming into heat. And because our sheep are also seasonal breeders, we're getting that challenge with the rams as well because you know the ewes are starting to cycle which means the rams are starting to care about something besides hay <laughs> um and other than that we're just getting ready to go back to school and just kind of wrapping up the summer and getting started towards harvest so carrie what's been happening on your farm and with your family well we have wrapped up a lot of the summer busyness and there's like this meme that keeps floating around, like when you're an adult, it's just repeating saying after this week, things will get better. Um, <laughs> I was actually saying that to myself this morning on the drive home yeah. from daycare drop off. <laughs> but it, and, you know, it just continues and ad nauseum. But seriously, like this week and next week, there's like a little breathing room and it's really quite nice <laughs> um but we went out checked some of our fields this morning my husband and I and our little guy um we were looking at our late plant corn and but, uh, but it's not great it's not great um we're gonna be okay overall but those fields are we're gonna be lucky to have any corn in those corn fields so might just be a lot of silage right not really the plan, but it's never the plan. Yeah, <laughs> there right. is that's no what, plan. <laughs> that's what farming's about, right? Right. So one thing that we've decided to ask each of our guests, because most of them are involved in agriculture like you are, is what are you growing? So that can either be your family, what's growing in your farm or uh, platform or, or business. Yeah. So um, I guess my, my most important job is growing my two little boys. Um Silas turns six uh, this month here and starts kindergarten. 
in a couple of weeks. And then Benji is three and we are fully in the midst of being three and potty training at the same time. So, um, and drinking more than usual. <laughs> I kids Was that sort of. you drinking more, Carrie, or him drinking more? Or no, just me. yes? Okay. Me. Gotcha. Um, no, him less. <laughs> so we can monitor the peas. Um, and then, you know, our farm, we milk about 100 cows and grow crops on 250 acres. So mostly corn and alfalfa. Um, oh, and then I guess, <laughs> then there's this other thing I do. Um, it's called Dairy Carry. <laughs> my blog, my speaking, <laughs> um, consulting business. And basically it's a twofold. The forward facing is that I teach people where their food comes from. And I work to be a trusted trusted person for people to come to to ask their questions about food and farming. And then the other side is I teach farmers how to also do that for themselves. So Carrie, did you grow up on a farm or how did you know this is what you wanted to do? And how did you get your start as an advocate? So yeah, I did not grow up on a farm. I grew up in the city and I didn't know that this is what I wanted to do. It just happened very organically. And I went, okay, I guess this is the ride we're on now. Um, leaned in and and went for it. So um, I ended up married to the son of dairy farmers, but he was going to stay in town. He wasn't coming back to the farm. Um but after we got married, I was like, maybe I want to try this farming thing. And I dove in and a number of years later, he left his job in town and came back to the farm too. And the rest is history, I guess. I mean, we're, we're, we're all in. How did you become Dairy Carry? What is the, the Dairy Carry origin story? Well, um, I started on Twitter. And this was when I was first on the farm and I was learning from other farmers on Twitter, learning from them about farming. And I, you know, as I was learning, I was also teaching, you know, okay, hey, I learned this. I thought this was cool. And I was sharing it out and, and Twitter turned into a blog and that turned into a Facebook page and then an Instagram and Reddit and Snapchat and TikTok and you name the platform, I'm probably there, although I don't like them all. So it just snowballed into what it is today. Um, I started speaking at, at conferences as a keynote speaker and putting on trainings about seven years ago. And um, now I, I don't even know how many states I've spoken, but I've um, traveled internationally to do that, which has been really cool. Um, gave me a lot of different perspective on agriculture around, around the world. And I just kind of keep doing what feels right. As I had mentioned in our last episode, I started working with Carrie through mentorship through the Women's Food and Ag Network. And when I was thinking about who I wanted my mentor to be, Honestly, Carrie was the first person that popped up for me just because I really admire um, how well she does at welcoming people while also holding fairly strong boundaries around what is up for discussion and what is not, as well as keeping her family life relatively separate from the, the dairy Carrie persona. Honestly, I was really intimidated to reach out, but then I realized that like the worst she could do was say no. Um, you know, it wasn't like she was going to go on Twitter and make fun of me for asking her to work on this or anything. Or she hasn't yet anyway, so I guess there's still time. I only make fun of bad country music and people who are truly assholes on Twitter. Well, you said there's... something about a language warning. I don't know that you threw that in there, but I'm going to assume that I'm okay saying that. All right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So Carrie, what's your experience been with mentoring? Because I know that you work on several other mentoring programs as well. Yeah. So uh, several years ago, I helped to found the Dairy Girl Network, which is an organization that's dedicated towards helping women in the dairy industry grow and achieve and lead. And we have a mentorship program through that, that I'm on the committee for. And so I've seen mentorship in many different ways as an organizer, as a mentee, as a mentor, and in that program. And now, you know, working with you, it's really cool to help people grow into their potential and also to find people who can help you grow into your potential and give you the needed perspective sometimes. So I'm a fan. 
everyone needs somebody to bounce ideas off of. So, you know, you can think of a, you know, lots of friends help to mentor me, but actually having a structured mentorship is, is really helpful. I think. Yeah. I think having the accountability definitely helps of knowing that you're waiting for me at the end of the month and that, that I have, and that. I'm going to have questions for you and homework. <laughs> that and sounds be like, so hey. ominous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, but it's, it works. It's definitely good to have somebody light that fire a little bit and keep you on track and help you think through what the next logical step is. So Carrie, one thing I had mentioned was that a lot of why I wanted to work with you is that you do, I think, pretty impressive work at not telling too many people when they're being assholes. I mean, you know, sometimes, sometimes it has to be done. Things like I see you get a lot of posts about, you know, what's well, a sponsored post, you're a, a shill for the man being paid by big ag to sell butter or whatever. Because I think for any farmer who's going to interact with the general public, eventually this is going to come up. You know, I mean, even at farmer's markets, I've had complete strangers walk up and lecture me about what my cows should be eating. And these strangers were not actually veterinary nutritionists. In Probably any didn't way. even have a single class in ruminant nutrition, but that doesn't keep them from feeling like they know what they're talking about, right? Yeah. Not knowing how many stomachs a cow has shouldn't stop you from having an expert opinion on what they should be eating. See, I'm just wondering how you deal with not telling everybody when they're being assholes. <laughs> well, uh, That's I mean, a bad sign. if someone's like straight up just nasty, you'll never even see them. They get deleted <laughs> in a yeah. second and blocked from my page. I just don't even put up with it. Nope. Nope. It's my house. And you don't get to act like that in my house. So I also believe no is a full sentence. So you will occasionally see, you know, somebody will go on a rant and my response is just no. <laughs> No. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times I, I'll let my followers handle it. Like they can, they can tell people what's up. So yeah, you know, I think most people, you know, your trolls are trolls and they come around again and again for me. Um, if they're trolly for too long, then they get blocked and deleted again because it's my house. I'm just not dealing with it. But most of the time, if there's a thread of truth, you can put the full picture out there, let other people who are reading the comments know what the truth is. And a lot of times the the nasty comments can be a learning opportunity if you handle them the right way. As far as the folks getting a little twitchy about you had a paid post, I don't know, yesterday maybe for... I had Sarah Lee a couple couple days ago, uh, meet, deli meet. I have a mortgage oh, to pay, right. man, and it's a pandemic and I've not been out speaking. So if I can use my platform to make some money for my family, and of course, I'm never going to promote a product that I don't think is decent. I mean, that's, that's what it is. It just is, that's what it is. And if somebody wants to be nasty to me about it, whatever. I love that there seems to be this feeling that you're like Scrooge McDucking your way around your farm in your you know, royalties from talking up lunch meat and milk, you know, that you're like making billions of dollars a year. Oh yeah. I'm rolling in it. <laughs> she just doesn't want to share early. And I see what's going on here. Yeah, um, people knew how much my website cost me to keep up in a year versus how much I make in a year. I think they'd be pretty shocked. So Carrie, you're using a lot of different platforms and it seems like they're they're always expanding and new ones come alongside and some of us decide we're either too old or too uh, too lazy to join up on the new ones. If people are looking to get into aggregating or even just marketing their own farms or their own products or just sharing about farm life, do you have any thoughts on what platforms are best for different promotional opportunities or, or where you find you have the best contacts with people? I think the best platform is the one you enjoy the most. So if you don't like it, don't do it. Overall, I think right now TikTok has incredible ability to reach outside the choir in agriculture. And I think if you're good at TikTok, you could really get out there to a lot of people. But I don't actually like TikTok, so I did it for a <laughs> while. Um, I just don't want to spend my time there. And so I don't really. I mean, I like to watch other people's videos, but I don't really want to make my own. Right. So yeah, I think creating, creating content then becomes a job part of, and part more of a chore. Yeah. Right. And I'd rather spend my time someplace I enjoy. 
So that's what I do. Yeah, that makes sense. So Katie and I are both in a similar situation in that we're both living near and working with our in-laws, which I think is also your situation. Like you said earlier, this wasn't the the plan, but how have you found life with with neighbor in-laws and then what has having kids added to that family dynamic? <laughs> We're gonna have to add like a well, an in-law warning to the beginning yeah. of our show because every episode so far has talked about in-laws. <laughs> I mean, but it's such a big deal when you farm with in-laws. I mean, it's a family that you didn't grow up with. It's a family whose customs, whose way of doing things are probably foreign to your own. And somehow you have to make it all work. And it's really freaking hard, I think, um, for a lot of people. And we, I will say we have not always gotten along with my in-laws. There's been some pretty big blitz in the family over the years. Um, it's not easy, but we're at the point now where my in-laws, um, my mother-in-law was invar- involved in a farm accident six years ago, lost her leg. So she's retired. Um, my father-in-law is still very active on the farm. Um, but probably shouldn't be. So, you know, hard of hearing has some vision things and, and, you know, to the point where he's been farming his whole life. So his body's so stiff, like he can't turn his head in the skid loader. It's a problem, but we're at, we're the sandwich generation. Like so many of us out there, we have young kids and we have um, older parents to take care of and family dynamics being what it is that has fallen squarely on me. And handling all the medical stuff, handling all that kind of stuff is a lot of extra stress. So super great. Love it. (laughs) Every day. Every day, all day. It's it's just the best. But you know, it is what it is. So we just make it work. I know I'm I'm lucky in the sense that my mother-in-law didn't grow up on a farm and her mother-in-law did. So I think that, that that transition for her was very difficult. So she's been really good about respecting boundaries. And I did at least have farm experience that she didn't have coming into it, but she also has that daughter-in-law experience. So uh, I'm lucky in that sense that, that she's been really respectful of, of boundaries and uh, has been a huge help when kids came along with Oh, and don't get me wrong. Like my, my mother-in-law has Benjamin right now. Like she's been a great help with the boys and stuff. Like I'm not complaining about that whatsoever. Like there, there's definitely help there, but it two different families, two different, com- we're, we're very different types of people. And it, it's awkward, maybe. I mean, I'm completely comfortable around them, but I, I scratch my head a lot at like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't understand this. I don't, I don't understand how that, okay. (laughs) All right. It's fine. (laughs) Guess that's how we do things. Right. I know that her accident was, was a huge deal for you, for your family and for her. And I mean, I don't want you to speak for her in terms of how that impacted her health wise, but have you guys made changes since the accident or how has that accident changed? You know, what farm safety looks like for your family? Oh, well, you know, having, having me be seven and a half months pregnant and all those hormones running through me at the time of the accident, um, gave me, gave me a real good case of PTSD. So anxiety now drives a lot of the decisions on our farm. We watch the boys really close. We don't we probably don't have the farm life with our kids that we would have if the accident hadn't have happened, but that's also okay because it means we're being safer. So the boys are here at home with me or inside with grandma. They spend time out on the farm, but they're not out there unsupervised. They're not, they're just not as much in harm's way today as maybe things would have been when back when we believed that it only happened to other people. That's the thing sometimes as much as you don't want it, the, the accident is what can can lead everyone to doing things better and, and safer, right? Absolutely. You know, I think part of what people forget too about farming with in-laws is that you're in business with somebody else's family. Like you're not just hanging out a lot. You're actively in business and you're in business with somebody who's 
likely been doing it for a long time and is tends to be very set in their ways. Um, it's a lot more than people give it credit for, I think. Well, and I will go forward and say, you know, the family I'm married into is not the family that says we've always done it this way. They've been, always been great about embracing new things and trying new things. And that's one of the reasons why our herd has been one of the top herds in our county um, for for forever. Um, and, and they've been great about letting us make choices and decisions and, and things like that. It, it's been good in that way. When it comes to the business side of things, honestly, we're all pretty well on the same page. We're all somewhat risk avoidant. We're all pretty cheap. I will say Patrick and I are not as cheap as my in-laws. We will spend money when it's warranted. We don't have to squeeze the the nickel until the buffalo craps, right? Um, but the bigger struggle for me is like the family life, like holidays and just the day-to-day stuff is is the bigger struggle for me, which is probably the reverse for a lot of farm families that are blended you know like they're like if we just had christmas together it'd be fine and like you know and didn't have to farm together it'd be okay we're kind of like oh actually we farm together just fine it's like the day-to-day stuff of a birthday party or something coming up and yeah you need to you can bring something but you need to not show up two hours late to the birthday party (laughs) because you're supposed to be bringing something that kind of thing So, Carrie, what do you do to not be dairy Carrie and the mom of two little kids and a dairy farmer and that like four and a half minutes a week for being a self? I shower. (laughs) Fancy. No, I'm grateful for that. (laughs) Me too. Um, No, you know what? I um, I miss traveling for work because, yeah, it was work for dairy Carrie, but I could like hole up in my hotel room at night and not have the television on and just enjoy peace and quiet and eat a meal by myself. So I'm looking forward to the travel component of, you know, what I do coming back. That's kind of my thing. I cook, I end up cooking for my family and then they refuse to eat it, but I enjoy cooking. That's, that's something I like to do for me. I know I was asked recently to, um, do some work for actually for the Women's Food and Egg Network conference in November. And I was, I mean, I'm, I'm very excited to take part, don't get me wrong, but I was a lot more excited before I remembered that it's virtual and there's no night in a hotel by myself in the quiet. Damn it. I know. So I told Jim that I was just going to get a hotel room for the night anyway. And he's like, but isn't it, it's virtual. And I was like, don't ruin this for me. This is why we go to conferences so that I can I be left alone. Do it. Do it. Another yeah. um, woman I follow on Instagram, Longborn Farm, she went and got an Airbnb recently to just like for a couple of nights to go and work. And I'm like, yes. genius, genius. Yes. I know one of my good friends and I talk about that someday we're all going to rent an apartment together and it's just going to be pure white inside <laughs> and there will be no children and there will be no anything to clean up okay. and no TV and it'll just be quiet and clean and we'll never actually overlap times there you know we'll like book <laughs> right. it out so book it out like google three calendar. hours mm-hmm. dead silence in a clean house um so carrie i like to ask the ridiculous questions because arlene likes to ask about you know like serious topics what fair contest could you dominate like if you were going to go crush a bunch of little kids at your county fair we don't have any fair contests that are fair. You don't have like, even like showing or oh, anything. Um, I don't know. We could make one up. I could dress down a vegan better than just about anyone. I would pay to see that. We're discussing having like a barnyard language fair online, I think. We're trying to figure out how to, you know, do livestock showing over the airwaves. <laughs> I showed a mini donkey in high school. So like, I mean, I just, clearly I'm not in it for the competition because um, class of one. uh, (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not competitive because I really am, but uh, county fair, I don't know. I, uh, I could probably 
kick some ass in some cooking contests though that's fair yeah Take not square not or cookies right. no not baking not baking cooking got it two different book, things completely. book baking bake booking baking is science and um <laughs> details and that's not my jam <laughs> keeping track of time so when you're talking about vegans i know that um that sometimes that particular demographic comes along with some hate aimed towards us farmers how do you deal with that and has that changed at all since you had kids back when I started my platform and I'd have vegan trolls show up on my page I always used to say well as long as you don't call me a Nazi a murderer or a rapist you can stay like and say your piece whatever you're wrong but you're allowed right, to yeah, stay. Go ahead and say it. But you know, since having kids and stuff, and just in general being over it, now I just automatically block and delete vegan mm-hmm. comments on my page. I don't care if they're respectful or not. It, I do not have the energy nor the desire to put time and energy into responding to that kind of vibe on my page. It's just not what I'm doing. Just not going to do it. And I they're don't. Not typically there to have a discussion. No, anything, right? they're, no. They're I mean, if to engage, if they're on my page, they're there to troll. Like, no vegan is coming to my page. Like, hey, maybe I can convert her this dairy farmer. Like, yeah. or if they are, they're absolutely delusional because that's just not how the world works. So it's the same with politics. It's the same with anything. You know, you're not going to go head to head with people on strongly held beliefs and get anywhere so I just don't entertain it it's not my thing and occasionally I've had vegans oh my gosh I remember several years ago Silas was just a baby so Culver's had me do a takeover on their page and one of the photos I used was a picture of Silas on my hip when he was just this chunky roly poly you know skin folds everywhere baby he was a chunk and this woman was like look at how unhealthy that baby is it's from all the dairy and i was like bitch he had a milk protein intolerance that's soy that is body by soy formula right there but it's harder when it's directed towards the kids whether it's the kids or at me now i just don't tolerate it we're done and yep. now Silas is huge in just well-proportioned ways. And a kid has a freaking six pack. I know the, the last vegan that ended up on our farm page, I didn't even say anything and our customers took care of it. And they really, they had a good time. They, you know, it was like watching a bunch of cats with a mouse. It was just, I was starting to feel a little bad by the end because I was just like, you really had no idea what you walked into. And I'm going to be honest, like there's other advocates out there. I'm not calling any names out i'm not saying this is wrong to do but there's some advocates that say you know i love the vegan trolls because every time the vegan trolls show up then everyone else does and my page gets tons of new followers and likes and stuff and yeah it's definitely a strategy and there's some pages out there that have been built on that i don't have the energy to have that kind of vibe in my world i'm just not into it so yeah you have to be I'm, willing to tolerate a certain amount of you know vitriol and you know and anger and all of the negativity that comes along with it and not everyone is in that place to be able to to want that or to have to manage it to some degree i mean you can't let it go on forever yeah some pages do just for the like that's not what I want my community to be. There's pages out there where, you know, it's just nothing but this fighting back and forth, whether it's veganism or politics or whatever. And that's like the downfall of social media now. It's what we're all exhausted by. I don't want my page to be that. My page isn't for that. My page is a positive place for people to hang out. And that's what I do. One of the things I like a lot too about the work that you're doing is things like the humans of agriculture and just this centering of diversity. So, I mean, if people are really, really racist, really, really homophobic, whatever, no amount of Facebook posting is going to change their minds. But I think for a lot of folks, it never occurred to them that there might 
be gay farmers and that they might actually even know gay farmers. Or there might be black farmers who are more like them than lots of other white people are simply by being farmers. And I find that such an interesting place to approach diversity from because the more the more you know someone and the more you look them in the eye and get to know them, the harder it is to to other them. Humans of Ag like got a lot of attention for my series on LGBTQ farmers, but I've been doing Humans of Ag for several years now. So my whole point of Humans of Ag was to just share stories of people. And almost all of my stories, I've tried to focus on the pieces of story that have nothing to do with farming. So the things that we are universal, no matter if you're in a rural or urban setting, that kind of focus is what Humans of Ag is about. So I wanted people to be like, okay, here's this person that I relate to. Oh, and they're a farmer? That's interesting. That's the whole get behind for humans of ag. But I also realized that we need to talk about diversity. We need to, again, share that. Would you guess what? There are gay farmers. There are lesbian farmers. It's a thing. So putting that out there and just trying to remind people that agriculture is diverse. It's not the most diverse by any way, shape, or form, but we're not all MAGA hat wearing, uneducated white boys that that some people think they are. And in it, I'm not saying that even in the politics side, but there's just a lot of people who look at rural people and, and farmers and put us in a box. Come on, you anyone who's been around farmers for long knows that there is no box. We don't even know what a box is half the time because you can't get us to like cooperate with one another or even do the same thing from one farm to the next we don't do that there's just there's no box and and people need to understand that i totally agree because i feel like you know then when the the wider world talks about well those rural people the flyover states i actually agreed with your policy but now you're just being such an offensive jackass that i don't want to vote for you i have a lot of liberal friends even who will just go off about rural dwellers and those farmers. And I'm like, it's people who live 20 miles from me who buy my meat at farmer's market and are still going on about those people who won't go organic. You're actually talking about me though. No, no, the other, other people. The other. I get this all the time where people are like, yeah, well, I'm glad you do things the right way on your farm. That doesn't mean that all the farms do that. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Like not all farms do the same protocol, but I'm not the exception. I'm average. You know, several years ago, I had a high school classmate who posted something about, you know, all meat producers were murderers. And I said something about how offensive that was. And she goes, well, I didn't mean people like you. I'm like, so are you saying I'm not a real farmer or that you're completely full of shit? Carrie, can you tell our listeners where they can find out more about you? I am Dairy Carrie on every platform. C-A-R-R-I-E. I I spell my name the right way. And uh, DairyCarrie.com is my blog. So you can go there, check out. Um, I share everything from recipes to why cows are skinny to humans bag to whatever else I feel like writing about at that time. So go check it out. Um, Sign up for my email list. Um, If I can ever get my ducks in a row, there's going to be cool stuff there. If you're into meal planning, Instagram, uh, I share weekly meal plans there. I share lots of recipes there and life on the farm. IG and Facebook are probably my main platforms. Um, And you'll find me lurking over at TikTok too. Thank you very much for joining us today, Carrie, and for uh, going off in all different directions. The discussion went in a lot of different ways, but we appreciate your time and sharing your platform and your life experience with us. Thanks for having me. I really am going to have to put together some sort of uh, in-law warning for the beginning of the episodes. We'll put it right in there with the swears warning. At least I know my in-laws can't find podcasts. There's that. My in-laws wouldn't have any idea how to find it. I'll admit this is my like fangirl moment. It's been nice to see you in like real life. Well, kind of real life, as much as it gets during a pandemic, right? Carrie, you really ought to get like a a Zoom background of like the Palace of Versailles or something and just put it, (laughs) this is what Carrie's real life is like. Well, supposedly I have a yacht, so. The yacht? Wow. Yeah, I had a commenter once years ago say that I'm probably writing from my yacht because (laughs) I'm just the heiress to a large dairy farm. Ooh. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah yeah that was that was hilarious hysterical <laughs> honestly and my father-in-law when I told him about that he he glommed on to that he got a shirts made that say dairy air <laughs> and nice. dairy heiress and the funniest thing I think my father-in-law has ever said is he looked at me after I told him about this comment he looked me up looked me down he goes well, you better start dressing the part, girl, because no heiress of mine is dressed like that. <laughs> I know when when it's Jim and I got engaged, one of the family members made a comment that I was clearly and quite seriously marrying him for money. You mean me with my um, hey? full-time big kid job that makes enough? Yeah. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. All right. Yep. I mean, I just, you, I park my us? yacht like down in the river, you know, where yeah. nobody will see it. Yeah. There's, there's a family member who came after me for being a gold digger too. And I was like, do you know how much debt I took on when I married into this situation? <laughs> Would you like to pay some of that off? Well, that was just it too. Like, you know, I don't think I'm that great. I'd probably be a pretty shitty trophy wife for sure. <laughs> but like, do you really not think I could have done any better? If I was going to marry for money, a Land small farmer who <laughs> sells tractors for a living probably wouldn't have been it. If I was going to marry for money, I just wouldn't get married and I'd just find sugar daddies or be on a pole somewhere. I think that would be a preferable. Yeah. Farming seems to be the worst way to marry for money, really. It's way too much work. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. All right. Well, I am All going right. to roll out. Thank you, ladies. Yeah. I'm All impressed right. none again, of my Karen. kids came to find me today. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right, take care. So folks, our next segment in our uh, evolving show lineup is what we're calling Cussing and Discussing, which is going to be our little time to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, the funny, the shit you wish had gone differently. So Arlene, what do you have to cuss and discuss this week? So we have a dairy farm, like I said, and we uh, have just started during pandemic life doing a little bit of direct selling of meat from some of our, our cows that are no longer in the, the dairy herd. We have a local abattoir, so we have some had some ground beef ready for sale. So I was peddling it on just Facebook Marketplace, working around the algorithm because you're not allowed to sell animals, all that kind of stuff. So I got this message the other day from someone wondering if I was willing to barter. And I mean, I'm always up for a barter. You never know what you might get. But the person offered me in exchange for ground beef uh, peacock chick. And I decided that that as appealing as, as they are in appearance, that I, uh, I didn't need any peacock chicks in my life because I've heard peacocks before and they're terrifying. So uh, I did not barter any meat for peacock chicks she was just gonna have to pay cash if she wanted to buy any meat did she end up buying any meat though she didn't no she only wanted no. to give away her peacock chicks i guess she just desperately she probably would have paid you to take those pe peacock <laughs> yeah, chicks maybe. for uh for any listener who's not familiar with what a peacock sounds like full grown um you're just gonna have to google that shit because i'm not gonna take the risk that somebody's gonna like drive into a bridge piling at that noise it's horrifying it's really really bad like if you have guineas or if you've ever heard a guinea and you thought a guinea was bad you don't even know their appearance is very deceiving because they look all pretty but oh they do when they you do. hear them we have some friends whose uh whose in-laws have peacocks and they of course you know live on the same farm because farm families these peacocks will come and perch on my friend's bedroom you know porch railing <laughs> right outside the french doors to their bedroom and we'll start right. up in the middle of the the pre-dawn hours and i don't know how they haven't shot the damn things yet but i wish jim had gotten a video of it the boy child was out helping daddy in the cow lot the other day and wearing his you know his little shorts and his cowboy boots which I don't know that poor kid's just got such short legs and so his cowboy boots like come up to his knees you know and mama buys him good leather cowboy boots now because that's that is my splurge I've just accepted that I will pay a stupid amount of money for boots for my kids daddy and the and the boy child come stomping in and there's I mean you can smell him coming you know it's one of those kind of things and daddy says the boy child i think stepped backwards off the concrete into a soft spot in the cow lot and went ass over tea kettle into the cow shit so here's my sweet little three-year-old dripping cow shit there's cow shit inside his boots and there's cow shit in his ears there's just cow shit everywhere and he was walking around and he goes it gusting mommy it gusting it needs some rock in there like my sweet baby is gone and here's this kid who's wanting to stop at every neighbor's along the way home, you know, so that he can tell them how to feed their cows. And he's giving me shit about, you know, ordering rock to put down. 
like cool I mean, kid get a damn there. job <laughs> like maybe if i wasn't spending my money on boots that you outgrow every month maybe we'd have money for some gravel i don't know just a thought Anyway, folks, so if you have anything that you would like to cuss and discuss, you feel free to send us a message or leave us a voice memo somewhere and we'll uh, maybe play it on the show or read it out or whatever. On our next episode, we are very excited to be talking to Natasha Nichols, who is the executive director of the We Sow, We Grow Urban Farming Project in Chicago, about their work and about their upcoming virtual conference. As always, you can find us on Facebook in our private group, the Barnyard Language Group. You just have to send us a request if you want to come and talk to us and other farmers and farm families. We have a Patreon if you want to contribute to our coffee fund or to buy Katie some fill so that her boy will not step in cow shit. Or also, if you just want to pay for some laundry detergent for all the yeah, times he does too. fall in the cow shit. Or some new leather boots. Um, we've also got a Instagram at Barnyard Language. There is a email address, which is barnyardlanguage at gmail.com. And we will see you again at on our next episode. We also have Twitter, which is oh, yeah. at Barnyard Pod. All right, folks, until next time, may all your laundry get folded and may all your eggs make it in the house safely.